Hello, everyone. My name is Billy Jones. I am a proud member of the South Florida Writers Association. On behalf of our esteemed organization, we welcome you to the July 2020 virtual showcase, our author virtual showcase, a virtual experience. You know, when we look at that title, we're playing off of that name, and, and I'll tell you why we're doing so. Typically, we have this segment live on ground, but since we are experiencing some unprecedented events at this time, we decided that we wanted to give our authors the opportunity to engage with their audience, their, their members, their audience, an audience in general, and of course, future readers. So we decided to take this to a virtual atmosphere. It, this organization, South Florida Writers Association, is a nonprofit organization that specializes in providing a forum for published veteran uh, or emerging writers so that they can showcase their work, share their talents, network, and grow. So we hope that you will consider joining us. Our links and our contact information is available in the description of this video and our YouTube channel. At this time, it is with great pleasure that I introduce my colleague, author John C. Davis. John C. Davis is an author, writer, speaker, and musician based in South Florida. John spent much of his career as a music educator for middle and high schools. Now focused on writing, his newest book, Accept, Connect, Heal, A Vision of Hope for Our World, great title, is available on Amazon.com. And also it is available in the link that is provided in the YouTube channel below with our partner, Books and Books. It is with great pleasure that I welcome to the virtual experience, our virtual showcase. John C. Davis. Hi, John. Hey, Billy. Thank you so much for having me today. And it's an honor to be, be here today to share a little bit about my writing and myself with all of you today. I just feel very honored and grateful that the South Florida Writers Association invited me to be here today. So it's quite an honor. And I, I appreciate the time and the effort and, and willingness to have you on today. I've been a writer my whole life. Um, it's something that I've done, I, I used to do it even as a small child, but I, I became an author two years ago when I came out with my first book, Bill, you mentioned, Except Connect Heal. It was something that I've always wanted to do my whole life. I had written manuscripts at various times and kind of shelved them, put them in, put them in a, you know, put them in the drawer and wasn't sure whether I wanted to share them or whether other people wanted to hear them. I wasn't quite sure. And it wasn't until two years ago that I had an uh, epiphany of sorts. Uh, and I was sitting in my car. I remember sitting in my car and I just started writing things down. Again, it was probably no different than what I'd done my entire life, but I started writing things down and I started sharing them with friends and I started sharing them on social media through my Facebook and Twitter. And the feedback I got from some of my really good friends and my wife was that, wow, maybe you should share this, put this together, compile this, put this together in a book. And that's really where this book came from. That was the inspiration was that so many people had so much positive feedback about it that I, I really just wanted to put it together. And, and really, these are a lot of thoughts that have been rolling around in my head my entire life that I wanted to get out there. I've been inspired by a lot of authors in my life. Um, some namely recently, Neil Donald Walsh wrote a book called Conversations with God. That book really changed my life. It changed my spiritual life in ways it really taught me about having a spiritual experience and being connected with spirit through other people and that we all belong to a common thread of humanity, that we all belong to that. Eckhart Tolle, he's another author who I follow a lot, uh, The Power of Now. There's, there's so many great books that he's inspired, frankly inspired me to be a writer for years. I published, I self-published my book, Except Connect Heal, with the help of my writing coach, Lawrence Pollard, who is based 
in San Francisco, California, who's been a real inspiration to me over the last couple of years. And I hired a wonderful, a wonderful um, formatter who did my formatting in the book, Joe Harrison. She lives in France, and I hired her, and she did a great job with that. I also hired a really good friend of mine, Gina Nolte, who did the beautiful cover of this, which I was so grateful to her. I've known Gina for years and years, and when I asked her to do the cover, she was just, uh, I don't know, just really honored to do that, and, and it was beautiful that she accepted that, so I was grateful for that. What inspired me to, to, to self-publish this book, because I know a lot of people do go down the publishing route and some people do the self-publishing. The reason I chose the self-publishing is because a lot, frankly, because of the name recognition. Um, just, I haven't been an author for long. I don't have the name recognition of a lot of authors who are out there already. Um, and I really wanted to put myself out there and be able to have my work out there. So I'm grateful for the self-publishing routes. I'm grateful that that option exists on Amazon. I wanted to read several things today. I wanted to start and explain a little bit about the book first before I read from it. There's three basic chapters in the book. The first one is accept. The second one is connect. And the third one is heal. And as I was writing this, talk about a little bit about the process of writing, I wrote essays. Essentially what the book is, is a series of essays that I wrote about my vision of hope for the world. Essentially, it's how I envision the possibility of how we can get along with each other. Some may look at it as an idealized version, something that may or may not happen happening currently in the world. As you know, there's, there's a lot of dissonance going on in the world. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of issues going on right now. And I believe very strongly that we can hold a vision for a better world, a vision of hope. And that's where the subtitle came from, a vision of hope for our world. That I do believe that these aren't just idealized uh, beliefs and things that I believe. I really believe that we have the capability of being better to each other. And so these writings, and these writings I want to share, are really based on my very strong belief that we do have that potential to be better to each other. And that there is really a lot of good going on in the world. And if we choose to focus on it, we can see more of it. That is one of my primary beliefs that I believe that when we focus on good, more will show up. So I'm going to read the first reading. This is out of the Accept chapter. And this is entitled, A Day Like No Other. And here we are. We have arrived at this day. We now have a decision to make. Do we assume that this day will contain the same events as the ones we encountered yesterday? Is anything really the same? It may look the same, but in fact, it is not. This day is like no other that we've ever lived. It may feel similar, but it is not the same. We have changed. The air itself that we breathe is not the same air. We will encounter people with different opinions than the ones they held before. Because they are now one day older, they have changed. Nothing will ever be the same again. This is as it should be. This is as it is. When we fully embrace the reality of it being a new and completely different day, we can acknowledge that we have a chance to make things different. The portals of time have opened for us. Time has made a way for us to be the person we have always wanted to be. Change is coming. Change is here. Your beautiful life awaits. And I want to talk about that a little bit. The reason I wrote that is because we don't have to base our future on our past. We have a past and we have our history, but that history does not have to dictate how the future is going to go. And we can apply that to our own personal life, but we can also apply that to the history 
and society as a, in general. As we look at the news recently and other current events, we can see that there are so many issues that we're trying to heal from past histories and past events. And I know that we have a choice to change. And so when I say change is coming, change is here, we have the ability to change. We are empowered to change. The next reading I'd like to read is also from the exact chapter. It is called, We Are Enough. Enough, such a powerful word. We say it often, I don't have enough money. I don't have enough food. I don't have enough money. My car isn't big enough. My house isn't big enough. My clothes aren't fancy enough. I don't have enough clients. The list could go on forever. What is enough? To the guy living on the street, a solid meal would be more than enough. To the person sick with cancer, another day of life would be enough. To the man who just missed being in a tragic car accident, taking another breath is enough. It is all relative. What is enough for some is not for another. What I can tell you for certain is that whoever you are, however much money you make, whatever your job is, whatever car you drive, whatever your home looks like, in the eyes of our creator, you and I are enough. We do enough. We are loved unconditionally, exactly for who we are. We came out of the womb with literally nothing on our back. And we will leave this life with the same. What we came here with was a beautiful soul. We will leave with the same beautiful soul. We are enough. And what that speaks to for me is that part of the human condition, again, going back to some of the Eckhart Tolle writings, some of the Neil Donner Walsh writings, is that there's, there's a basic human condition that we always want more. No matter what we have, we always want more. And what I want to adopt in my own life, and through that reading, I'm, I'm tr trying to get to, to believe for myself and for us, all of us, is that we already have enough. We don't need to do anything else to be loved and cared for, either by ourselves or by our creator, that we are already enough. I want to move on to the Connect chapter. And this is the chapter where, after I receive acceptance, we learn to connect with each other. And the first reading I want to read is called Building Bridges Between Us. It may seem like we are safer when we surround ourselves exclusively with people who look like us, talk like us, think like us, and hold the same opinions as we do. It does not make us safer. It makes us either feel less than or better than. It creates and fosters isolation, isolation, which in turn creates more fear. May we all have the courage to have people in our lives who look different from us, talk different from us, and hold different opinions. In this way, we build bridges between us. On this bridge, we will build the highway back to peace. On this bridge, we will grow because our minds and hearts will expand. When our hearts expand, all of humanity benefits. May we all someday cross this bridge from the land of fear and prejudice to the other side called love and acceptance. This is my prayer today. And it goes back to celebrating what I believe we need to move beyond just tolerating each other. I was always taught, well, I should tolerate people. I should, I should tolerate people who are different than me. It's not just tolerating, it's celebrating. When I can move beyond tolerance, celebrating, and seeing the beauty in all people, that I believe is one of the keys, one of the ways that we can learn to heal so many divisions that we have in our world right now. I believe that we learn how to celebrate each other, celebrate the differences between us and see the beauty that we all have. 
no matter how we look, where we come from, what car we drive, what kind of home we have, whatever, whatever it is, country we come from, et cetera. It's, it's all, we all have something value to contribute to this world. And I believe that when we learn to celebrate each other, that's when we're going to start to build these bridges between us. The second reading I'd like to read from the Connect chapter is called Choose Hope. Humans have the capacity to do good. Every day I see someone do something that surprises me. Someone goes out of their way to be kind. A person reaches out to someone in desperate need of help. A life is saved by a complete stranger. A person holds someone who needs a hug. Someone smiles at a stranger and maybe saves that person's life that day because they were going to end their life. We will never know what our kindness is doing on any given day. You really don't know how much your kindness will do for another. Whether you know it or not, you were sent here to help heal the planet. We all have this choice. That's what makes being human so wonderful. Not all humans make this choice, but today I will. I choose to be a light to others. I choose to allow the light of God to shine through me. Choose to believe that there is hope for us. Can you believe this with me? Can you see it with me? If you and I can see it and believe it, we will inspire others to believe. What this reminds me of is Nelson Mandela. He wrote a poem called Shine Your Light. And it was in his inaugural speech. And what he did was he talked about shining the light. And when we shine our inner light, we inspire others to shine their light. And it's when we allow ourselves to be ourselves that we will inspire others to be themselves and be their own, own beautiful light. There's another chapter I'm going to read, and I'm backing up to the Connect chapter. This is called, You Are My Spiritual Eyes. We humans exist as a group. We don't do well alone. Only as part of a nurturing and caring family can we thrive. We look out for each other and become the spiritual eyes and ears that we cannot be for ourselves alone. What you have to give me is what I cannot give myself. I give to you that which you need. Together, we help to guide each other down this road of life. This road is so full of blind spots. You will help me over that crevice that I would have fallen into if it were not for your loving hand reaching out. I will help guide you around that blind corner. I will never intentionally allow you to get hurt. Thank you for helping me down this beautiful road of life. We will lovingly guide each other into this amazing life we have created for each other. In the psychological world, therapeutic world, there's something called the Jahari window. Several of you may know what that is. But it, it's the belief that we cannot see our blind spots. We cannot see those things that we need to heal inside ourselves. We need other people to help us. And that's why I believe that through connection with each other, through interaction, through community, this is how to help. Help us work through our own blind spots. I know I have own blind, blind spots in my life, and I have many people in my life who have helped guide me over those blind spots, over, through those places, those dark places that I didn't know about. The last reading I'd like to read today is called The Inherent Good of Everyone. When we stand up and say that all human beings are created in the image of their creator, there is no way for us to treat another as subhuman. When we can admit to the inherent goodness in the work of other people, we cannot and will not disrespect them. When we say that every human is a beautiful and radiant expression of the creator, we cannot help 
but be willing to treat them as equals. You cannot harm someone when you value them. When we decide as a human race to see every single human as valuable, then all wars will end. All racism will cease to exist. All religious prejudice will end. All sexism in all its ugly forms will disappear. Slavery of all kinds will be gone. What I've learned is that this love and respect of another must come from within ourselves. If we love ourselves, we will then love another. Ultimately, the healing of our planet begins with loving ourselves. Then this love will radiate outside of ourselves. When we respect others, we humans will do what we came here to do, and this is to love each other. That's why we are here. When enough people believe this message, we will see the change we all want and need to see. And in wrapping up, I just want to say that I do believe that. I do believe that if we accept each other, we can learn to connect with each other. And by bridging those connections and healing, we can learn to help heal ourselves and each other and our planet. It is through these beautiful connections that I believe this is how we heal. And that is the end of my presentation. I, I thank you again for allowing me to, to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, John, for your, in, your inspiring words, your advice, your reflections. And folks, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and get that book. The links now are provided below so that you can purchase your copy today of Accept, Connect, Heal, A Vision of Hope for Our World by John C. Davis. We thank you so much for listening to this segment and for supporting our authors. Please continue to stay apprised of all of our activities by visiting our website at www southfloridawriters.org and you can also find us under a similar name South Florida Writers Association on our YouTube channel. We appreciate your support, be well, and we look forward to seeing you more at more of our workshops and our virtual showcase series.